Now, in the next few weeks, 330 UK military personnel will be off to West Africa to support French forces in Mali. This includes 40 military advisers to train soldiers in Mali and a further 200 British soldiers to neighbouring African countries. Well, since early January, French and Malian forces have been driving back Islamist rebels in the north of the country. So is it right that the UK is getting involved in Mali? Or are we risking entering something we won't be able to get out of? Uh, let me know your thoughts on that. 0500 909 693. Text is 85058. The Shadow Defence Secretary today has talked about his concerns about mission creep. Jim Murphy said uh, uh, a while ago it was just the commitment of lending an aircraft. Now it's hundreds of troops. Uh, they may be non-combat, combat, but it's not without risk. Do you agree with that? 0500 909 693, text is 85058. We can speak to Mohammed Ansar, a political and social commentator. Hello, Mohammed. Good evening. And the Conservative MP Colonel Bob Stewart, a former commander of British forces in Bosnia. Hello, Bob. Good evening. Uh, Mohammed, first of all, do you think we should be sending our troops to Mali? No, I, I, without a shadow of a doubt, I don't think we should. Uh, I think there is actually very little support um, from the public, from um, uh, key politicians. I think the cuts to troops that we're going to be seeing between now and 2015 mean that we have a, uh, a vastly demoralised and under-resourced army. I think the Prime Minister's speech in Davos at the World Economic Forum, uh, effectively last week now, raised some really uh, uh, serious concerns about uh, a potential quagmire that we might be entering. So I think Jim Murphy has hit the nail on the head. And, and just as a, a last point, we saw General McChrystal and Bob Woodward, who wrote Obama Wars, comment on the situation in Afghanistan, where one in three of those we were training were leaving to join al-Qaeda, mm. and we were spending billions of dollars every month okay. to train up people who were killing our troops. Bob Stewart, we're better off out of it. Well, I don't think we have a choice, actually. I think um, what's, ha what's happened is that uh, this place has suddenly hit the headlines, but it's been brewing up for a very long time. And uh, these people, these terrorists, are moving into this ungoverned space in, in the north of Mali, particularly. And from there, uh, most people who look at it are very concerned that it might just become a place from which we will be attacked. It's, so therefore... The reason why we're there is not particularly to support the French, but to, to be in our national interest to try and stop a possible attacks on us from there. The, the former head of the army, General Sir Mike Jackson, says that we may face a protracted guerrilla warfare. Is that a price worth paying, do you think? Well, I'm afraid that's what David Cameron suggested in the Commons um, uh, last week, and uh, that is wh why we're there, because actually we, we, we want to actually train up. That's why our troops are going, to train Africans to do the job. Because I agree in part with your previous speaker, um, our armed forces are too stretched and we cannot actually continue to police the world. OK. Uh, Mohammed Ansar, do you see, do you accept there is a wider picture to this? And in the short term, yes, you could argue that there have been job, cut, job cuts in the army uh, as well as public sector cuts in Britain. So how can we afford uh, to send military advisers to Mali? But there is a wider issue here of, of the creeping threat of Islamist terrorists. Well, I think the Prime Minister... Um stated very clearly what his view was on this wider issue. He said, I believe we're in the midst of a long struggle against murderous terrorists and a poisonous ideology. He later on went to talk about the economic potential of West Africa. He went on to talk about Nigerian oil exports and he went on to talk about exploiting and, and being more transparent with natural resources in sub-Saharan Africa. We have to accept that in the north of that region, we've got, you know, Saharan and sub-Saharan uh, Tuareg tribes who are uh, fighting against Malian nationalists and uh, I'm, I'm very uncomfortable with the phrase Islamists in the south and really there is no there's going to be no easy way to distinguish between uh, who is a Malian nationalist and who is an is Islamist and effectively what we've seen with the French going in it hasn't been successful at all it's essentially uh, perpetrated uh, and affected a, a Tuareg genocide by Malian forces and that is actually what we're seeing on the ground um, I think some of the media coverage has been absolutely well, the, the appallingly French, the sensational. French, the French forces claim, of course, that the Islamists are in retreat. You, you disagree with that, do you? Uh, well, we don't know for sure. I mean, I have to be very, very clear about this. During the war on terror, and you can make of that whatever you want, the US spent $500 um, million 
on uh, securing West Africa as a potential source of extremism and Islamist threat. Uh, in 2011, they sent a, a US aid uh, monitors out there to monitor the situation, and there, there, after a year or six months of reporting, decided that there were no more than 200 to 300 extremists across the whole of the Maghreb, across the whole of that region of Africa. Now, Bob Woodward uh, will, 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 has been very clear, and General McChrystal has been very clear about Afghanistan. We were in there essentially fighting 32 al-Qaeda terrorists. So it, it's not beyond the realms of possibility that we're going to join with France and go out to West Africa and fight essentially, what, 300 extremists across the whole of the region. All right. Uh, let's bring Shirley in from Sheffield. Hello, Shirley. Hello, Tony. Good evening. Hiya. Good to speak to Shirley. Your son was in the army. How do you feel about this? Well, he, he was in the Royal... My husband was in the army for 24 oh. years and my son was in the Royal Marines. Right. And I just think, how can you possibly make 5,000... Army personnel redundant, basically put him on, on the dole queue and then send them to yet another country to get embroiled in to something that doesn't really concern us at all. Mm. Um, we were in, we've been in Afghanistan 10 years and my husband was in the first, um, in Kuwait when it first started and that only was supposed to be monitoring and looking and etc. And look what happened. And the, the issue here, though, Shirley, is is is, is, is the, the those who have to make these difficult decisions would say when it comes to military engagement, it's very difficult to predict what turns events will take. So, you know, what, at the moment, at the moment, it's a holding position where they're sending in three hundred soldiers to train the troops out there. If it takes a if it takes a different position, then the army may have to rethink some of those redundancies. Well. I mean, at, at the moment, I think um, we're not going to have a British army. I think you might as well call us a UK defence force because the cuts into military personnel, not just the army, the Navy and the Air Force, um, is so extreme that okay. um, we're not even going to be able to defend our own country, never mind sending us out to help other countries. And I think, you know, yes, it's nice to help other countries, but we've been down this road before, Tony, and we just get embroiled in something that lasts for years and years. When my husband, when my son was in the Royal Marines, on one of his tours, they didn't even have enough kit. I had to send him buy from my own pocket boots and a coat, a winter coat, because mm. they didn't have enough. Okay, so, uh, so, Shirley, you know, I've how got ridiculous. Yeah, I've got to move on. The news is coming, but thanks for your point. You made it well, Shirley. Bob Stewart, I'll just ask you before we before we leave for the news um, at 11 o'clock. There is a dilemma here, isn't there? Of course, huge cuts to the army, yet if we did become embroiled uh, in West Africa, then, then some of those cuts may have to be reversed. Let's hope so. Uh, I'm sorry, but I, I'm, I'm not very happy about the cuts. Um, so, um, but I, I don't want to see the cuts, and I don't want us to be embroiled in West Africa or North Africa. OK, but that's uh, that's a kind of perverse flip side, isn't it, of, of these it things? Is. Yeah. yeah, yeah, of course it is. All right. T Tony, it's worth keeping in mind that it's three weeks ago today that the Leeds-born sapper Richard Walker gave his life on a green-on-blue attack in Afghanistan, okay. and we've had 60 losses there, and we'd expect more in West Africa. Mohammed, thank you. First for breaking news and the best live sport. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. Mohammed, Bob, thank you very much indeed. Your thoughts on that, please, 8505.